Hey guys, Max here. In this video, we're making a powerful DIY 24 volt lithium ion battery pack from recycled 18650 cells from my Razer E300 electric scooter back here. The scooter used to run off of a couple of 12 volt lead acid batteries, which have now run their full amount of cycles and have completely run dry. Since those type of batteries typically are not designed for electric vehicles, I thought this kind of battery would be quite the decent upgrade. And if you want to make yourself one of these bad boys as well, then grab some supplies, grab your tools, and most importantly, your spot welding machine. Oh, and if you don't have one of these yet, you can build yourself one by watching my second to last video where I show you how to make this thing. Anyway, let's get building. So just before we jump right into the making process of the e-scooter battery, I wanted to show you from where and how to acquire so many lithium ion 18650 cells for cheap. The answer to that is used or dysfunctional laptop batteries. Yes, even dysfunctional ones will contain at least two to four or even six healthy cells. Sometimes you'd be lucky enough to find one with a BMS or a battery management system that was the only problem. Opening up the shell the way I did, I actually preserved it for future use so it can be snapped back together. So what you're going to do is rip away the nickel strips that hold these cells together and then test each of them separately to see which ones are good and which ones are complete duds. Another method is by putting them through a little bit of charging using one of these charging modules to see which ones will make it indicate red. Like from this battery pack I was a little unlucky and only got two functioning 18650s. Here's everything you'll need to make the 24 volt 7 series 11 amp hour lithium ion battery pack. Wow, just look at this pool of recycled lithium ion cells. So my battery pack will consist of recycled cells from 5 different brands, but with very similar capacities. So what you're going to want to do before welding your cells together is actually remove the tab welding marks that remain on all of the recycled ones. Once you have done up all 35 of them, what you should actually do before removing the tab welding marks is to test that all 35 of your batteries are charged up and maintain a similar maximum voltage. So here's the battery spot welding machine I showed you guys how to make in my second to last video. So now with the spot welder being all hooked up, we're powered up and start spot welding. You'll first start out by spot welding 7 of these parallel battery packs consisting of 5 of these cells in parallel. The top and bottom connecting strips actually consist of 2 of these nickel strips each. And before spot welding each cell pack, you should actually hot glue all the cells together and then spot weld the strips on. The cells will be less fidgety to work with and they'll hold together very well overall. And then on to making the next one, and the next one, and so on up until we have 7 of these parallel cell packs. Here's all 7 of the 5 in parallel battery packs. Next, hot glue and stack all of these together in an alternating configuration, as this time we'll be spot welding in series and not parallel. Once you've done that, you can now seal off the sides for extra durability. Getting the spot welder back into gear, we're ready to spot weld the batteries, though this time in series. Here's all the nickel strips cut into half sized pieces. This time since we're spot welding nickel strips onto nickel strips, we're going to need to make sure that they're spot welded on extra well. For each series node, make sure you spot weld 5 nickel strips. So now we got row 1 and 2 connected, let's get row 2 and 3 connected. This will keep going until they're all hooked up in series, like so. With all the cells being spot welded together in the correct configuration, this is officially a battery pack, but not a fully practical one without a BMS or battery management system, which is what we're adding on right here. So this belt buckle styled BMS is actually a 20 amp 7S 24 volt BMS. So once you've glued on your battery management system board onto the battery, just like I did, you'll now connect the included BMS connector with all its wires sticking out, which will go to each and every node. First, you should cut the wires lengths accordingly to the distance from the BMS to each node and battery lead. This technique simply reduces the amount of space taken up and makes it look a lot more tidy. After 
After stripping each wire end, prepare each and every soldering point and then start connecting all of the 8 BMS wires starting with the negative one and then counting up connecting each of the 6 white BMS balancing wires to the series connections. And lastly, the positive balancing wire. With the boards connecting wires all hooked up to the cells, you should get something that looks like this. It's very important that you get each and every connection right. Make sure you start counting up each series connection from the negative lead up to the positive lead. If this step seems a bit confusing, you may refer to the circuit diagram, which you can download from the description. As the next step, solder a wire coming from the BMS's minus C or negative discharge lead to the negative battery terminal. So here I'm using a male XT60 battery connector. You'll want to solder the positive wire to the positive battery lead and the negative wire to the negative power lead on the BMS. You should get a voltage anywhere between 25 to 28 volts. Using this popular kind of battery tape that's called Kapton tape, tape off the two conductive exposed faces of the battery pack, just like so. Then just before you heat shrink your battery up, make sure you insulate it really well with some 2mm foam. 1mm foam may do good as well. Hey, hey, we now have a green battery. Well, not for too long. It'll now be heat shrink wrapped. Make sure you cut off a piece of wrap that's just big enough to cover those sides of the battery. And if it's a little bit too big, you can trim off a centimeter or two. Plug in your hair drying unit or heat gun if you have one of them and shrink on the wrapping. And don't panic if it initially starts looking really crimped up and messed up out of the gate. Don't worry, just keep applying heat and it should look something like this. Unless of course you use a wrap that's way too big for the battery. This is optional but you can also wrap the battery the other way or long ways just to add another durable layer. And if your hair dryer's heat didn't manage to get all the edges shrinked up well then you can use a lighter and then just push the loose parts in. Oh and after testing the battery out off camera in the e-scooter I realized I made a big mistake. The scooter would barely power up and then just die. That's because we wired it so that it discharges through the BMS and the BMS cannot handle such a high withdrawal of current. I hope you guys learn from my mistake and instead solder on the discharge connector directly onto the battery leads. With this crucial correction, the BMS's negative charge connector still solders to the negative battery lead. And as the last major correction, we need to have two charge wires, one from the positive lead and one through the BMS's negative power lead. With all the corrections in place, I'll wrap things back up. The voltage remains the same. All that has changed is that we now have a discharge cable and a charge cable. This is my Razer E300 electric scooter which I bought from a friend earlier this year in used condition. Before I get this thing onto my workbench, I'll first give it a little wipe down and clean. Opening up the lid of the e-scooter, the main objective here is to simply replace its old lead acid batteries for a newer homemade lithium ion battery. What I'll first do is desolder the lead acid batteries that are currently hooked up to the system. And then I'll replace the female connector leading back into the ESC for an XT60 female connector. So it's compatible to the connector on the new battery. And so the new battery can still be charged with the original electric scooter charger. I'll divert that charging port to instead connect directly to the battery instead of going through the ESC. I'll also disconnect the wires coming from the circuit breaker push button as we won't be needing it for this setup anymore. So back to the battery, I'll give those two dangling loose wires a proper connector to connect directly to the charging port on the e-scooter and that pretty much wraps it up for the battery. It is now complete. So it has a connector for discharging and now has a connector for charging. 
the battery weighs in at about 1.6 kilograms or three and a half pounds. So now let's finally get this e-scooter hooked up with the new 24 volt 11 amp hour lithium ion battery. This is the original charger for this e-scooter from Razer. From my measurements, it charges the battery up to 28 volts at one and a half amps. So now let's charge this thing up. When it's charging, it indicates red and when it's fully charged, it indicates green. Oh, and I realized another cool thing. I actually have just enough space for one more of these batteries in case I'd like to upgrade it with a second one in the future. So the new battery's voltage reaches up to over 28 volts when fully charged. So just before I hit the road with this thing, I want to pump up the rear tire. But here's the thing, you can't get to the valve without loosening this sprocket over here and pushing it aside. Only then can you pump it up. So that's quite a design flaw. With the tire being fully inflated, I tightened the sprocket back on, and then I secured the battery in place with this metal bar. Now it can't wriggle around in there. Securing the cover back in place, it's ready for action. dirt road. Let's test this thing out. Previously with two fresh lead acid batteries it had a top speed of about 25 km per hour but now that it has a top speed of 35 km per hour with a runtime of 30 to 40 minutes the additional speed and power certainly makes it a lot more fun to ride. If you guys enjoyed watching the video or found it helpful then don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and stay tuned for part 2 of the Razer E300 electric scooter upgrade where you'll see me add another handful of cool different features to improve the e-scooter's performance or usability. It might even get a good lick of paint and get all spiffed up. So stay tuned guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you very soon. Peace.